Hey everybody, it's Coach Pete. I'm back. Back for my vlog or vlog or whatever everybody calls it. Um, I realized today that it's been three years since I've done one of these. Uh, far too long. Wasn't the plan, but I'm back. Better than ever, as they say. Um, time flies. Um, I've, uh, over the past three years, I can tell you I've gotten quite an education. Um, I've learned a lot more, which is good for my students and for uh, players. Um, I've seen a lot more. I've heard a lot more. Um, a lot of it not good. Some of it's good. A lot of it is not. So one of the purposes of this vlog is to start to bring out things that, in my opinion, um, are hurting uh, youth baseball. Um, it's not all going to be negative. It's going to there's going to be some fun stuff in here. We're going to do some live uh, Facebook stuff from my office. We're going to do some live Facebook stuff from uh, lessons, um, and may even create a podcast. I don't know the first thing about a podcast, but I'm game. Some people have mentioned it. I'll learn it. Why not? Who knows? Um, but like I said, it's I think I've I've hit a wall now, being over five years. Uh, giving lessons and, and, and has there's just it's it's all bubbled up and it's time for a lot of the truth to come out uh, that uh, to me is being swept under the car under the carpet and it shouldn't be anymore um, but again a lot of good stuff that I'd like to share with you um, but before we get into all of that uh, I just want to mention a few things that are coming up for me personally with the National School of Baseball and for um, our travel teams, Venom. Uh, this coming Sunday at Anna Reno Sports Complex in Bolingbrook, we will have our player evaluations for our 2020 teams. 2019 was very successful. We had a blast. The kids learned, they got better, they got fun, and that's what it's all about. So 2020 is more of that we ever met. Her name is Katherine Roberts. Um, she is what is called a biomechanics human performance expert. Uh, so what does that mean? So everybody knows that I teach biomechanics in pitching and uh, biomechanics is part of my hitting instruction as well. Uh, but what Catherine does is she analyzes athletes and looks for weaknesses in different parts of the body and uh, works with the athletes to become stronger and get rid of those weaknesses so they can perform better. Um, she's absolutely amazing. Uh, she works with 14 Major League Baseball teams already, um, which is crazy, crazy cool. Um, love that. Um, she has actually started working with two of my older students and we've already begun to see the differences in them uh, with them working for her with her so uh, this is very exciting for me um, there's there's the path is wide open as to what her and I can accomplish together and what we're looking to do so hi Catherine uh, you didn't I, I'm, I'm still here I haven't talked to her in a few weeks so uh, I just wanted to give her a shout out so that's kind of something to keep in the back of your brain as I will begin to talk more and more about her some of you have I've mentioned her name to some of you uh, but there are hopefully some plans down the road to, for us to work, do more work together. That's new stuff. So now we got to take a deep breath. And it's time for some not so bad stuff. Not, bad, not so good stuff, I should say. Bad stuff. Um, I'm going to tell you a story that is probably one of the most unbelievable things, stories that I've ever witnessed. Um, in all my years and I've been a part of baseball and softball for 40 years. Um, so let me just kind of jump right into what happened in this story. Um, uh, and I'm going to tell you right out, I was involved with it. And uh, um, I not coaching, my boys are playing ball ball. Um, I did not volunteer to coach. I have no uh, inclination to coach. Um, I teach. That's what I do. Um, the only time I will coach is maybe assist one of my Venom teams, which I did this past summer, and that's it. So I didn't volunteer. Long story short, um, uh, my oldest son's team uh, at head coach and no coaches were there for the assistant coaches were not there for the first game. 
So he asked for some help to coach first face. He was going to have one of the players do it. The umpire said, no, it needs to be an adult. No one raised their hand. Actually, I went out and I did it. And whatever, I helped, did the best that I could. Got to the second game. Uh, we played a team that, unbelievably, as I've come to find out, half the team was a full-time travel team. What you're doing, playing in an in-house rec team, rec, rec league for fall ball, I don't know. But that's beside the point. Um, they played the game. Doesn't matter what the result was. We went through the shake hands line. We all did. I did. Um, I got back to the bench to our players. And um, uh, one kid said to me, oh, that's really nice. Now we get called losers by another coach. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, that coach called us losers. And I said, who did? So he pointed the guy out and I looked around and I didn't hear this. I didn't see it. Five or six kids all heard this. I said, well, tell me exactly what he said. What he said was, uh, winners get to go home, losers clean up. Uh, just you don't say stuff like that. Um, obviously, you don't refer to the other team as losers. You just don't do that. With that being said, at least half the team heard it. They were very upset. They were shaken. Um, didn't like it. So I went out to the umpire and to the head coach, and I said, look, I don't know what's going on here, but we got a problem. This needs to be addressed. This coach just referred to them as losers. So umpire said, which he should have said, is it's not my concern. You guys deal with it. So I walked over, and I asked who the head coach was. Uh, long story short, I repeated what the, the kids told me uh, was said. Uh, head coach said, we would never say, say anything like that. And I said, well, then you're calling about six or seven kids liars. And he said, I'm not saying that. I said, well, somebody said it. And that guy jumped up from the bench and said, I did. And I said, it's really not a nice thing to say to refer to the other team as losers. I said, that's kind of not really sportsmanship. I mean, you know, that's they, they're very upset. I said, can you, well, he said, I was, oh, I was talking to my team about it. I said, well, that's fine, but you said it in front of them, they heard it. I said, could you please do me a favor and just go over there and apologize and, tell, and just explain to them what it was. I said, because I, you know, it's just, that's just not right in my eyes. And he came out towards me and I just, I said, thank you, because I thought he was coming out to apologize. And, and I came out and I patted him on the shoulder. I said, thank you. And he goes, and I'll clean this up. Keep your bleeping hands off me before I stick my bleeping pen in your eye. So I just looked at him and said, really, that's where you're going to go with this? I said, that's really classy, really classy. Well, for those of you who don't know anything about the law, that's a felony. You cannot threaten anyone with bodily harm with a weapon and he had a pen in his hand. So I followed him over to the bench and he kind of apologized, I guess, in his own way. And yet at the same time, uh, he called them losers again and walked away. And an argument ensued and I was angry because I was threatened. Um, bottom line is uh, it was a horrible episode by a coach who shows a severe lack of sportsmanship, who's got a temper problem and uh, violent tendencies, uh, you know. Um, so besides the fact that this happened, what happened to him, right? Nothing. Um, I was told he was put on probation. I was also told that, and I said, well, I can go to the police and file a complaint. And they said, yeah, you can. I said, do you really want me to do that? Um, and they said, that's, that's up to you, whatever, that's just between you and him or whatever. If that's what you decide to do, that's what you decide to do. Uh, I haven't yet, um, still thinking about it. This is a very, very small example of what goes on constantly, not only in baseball, uh, but in all sports. I don't understand this. I can't get my brain wrapped around it. Um, 
I, I just don't. So uh, if he's watching this, you know, I may press charges. Uh, if coaches see this, good. It's, it's time for truth to come out because I got a lot more stories like this that are horrendous. Um, and it's, again, enough is enough. I've hit my limit, completely hit my limit, and uh, I'm done. Where I go from here with this, it's been a few weeks, um, and let's just see how it plays out. But that's, again, the, I, I've had enough of this kind of stuff. So I wanted to share that with people that you need to be careful um, even when kids are shaking hands, because there are things that are said in the line. If a coach is a good coach, you know, there are a lot of good coaches out there, a lot of good teachers out there. And you got to really listen what goes on, because that's not the first time, uh, at least in, in, in my tenure as coaching, that things are said uh, in the receiving line, which is supposed to be a good game, um, or whatever you want to say, uh, that are I've heard so many things that are just completely unsportsmanlike. And I don't, again, I don't understand it. What is the point? Um, kids learn from their coaches. So you got to be careful. Um, and for a guy like this, who I understand has a high position in another organization, uh, to have that position, to be, to act like that, and to have those violent tendencies and to threaten somebody, that's, that's pretty frightening. So, Enough of the bad stuff. I just wanted to share that with you. It's out there. Um, we move on. Um, hang on. I'm going through my notes here because, you know, I'm, I'm old. Yeah, if the kids are watching, you know, I'm old as dirt. Uh, as I tell, I tell the kids that uh, I'm so old that we played baseball with rocks and sticks, but uh, they don't, sometimes they don't get that. It's funny. Um, how about some good news, right? Let's have some good news. Um, our, my sixth student has received a scholarship, and I cannot begin to tell you how proud I am of all my students, but this is such a huge accomplishment. This is Nick, Nick Eilert goes to uh, Lake Park High School. Um, he received a scholarship uh, to Belmont Abbey College in North Carolina, where he's actually going to get to play with his brother, which is awesome. Um, he had other opportunities in other schools that were after him, but... Um, through Nick's hard work and us working together as a team, this is this is awesome. It's six one, which is to me in less than five years, um, is is amazing. Uh, when you connect together and you work together and you work hard and you're committed to a process, this, the good things happen. And uh, Nick is such a great kid, and he's worked so 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 hard. And the greatest thing that came out of this is that when he when he connected with me and he told me, he sent me a text and he said that we've still got work to do, which is, that's just typical Nick. And I can't wait to start working with him again in preparing. He's, he's going into his senior year of high school. So he's using his senior year of high school to prepare for college, which is awesome. So congratulations, Nick. Everybody should clap for him. Great job. Number six, and we've got others on the way. Um, and here, here's the thing that I want to say that, you know, there's there's this, I don't know what you call it. it it's it's a misnomer out there. It's, it's misinformation, which what else is new? That uh, the belief is in order to get a scholarship, you need to play with some high elite travel team in order to get scholarships. I'm disproving that completely. Um, if you're a high school player that takes lessons with me, I haven't charged anybody a dime for that. I do it because I want to, because I genuinely care about them and I know what their potential is and we work together. Um, and that's what's happened and it will continue to happen. It will continue to be that way. So if you're a high school student and you don't have anybody helping you and you know you've got potential, hey, call me up, man. But work with me and I'll work with you and, and we'll get you what you, what you deserve. Um, and these six kids have uh, um, really done something that to me is, is, is quite amazing. Um, I think I'm going to end it right now. This is almost 15 minutes long. Um, I will be back soon, uh, with fun stuff, good stuff. But again, stuff like the story that I told you need, the, need this stuff needs to be brought to the forefront. It has to, it has to stop. If enough parents and enough good coaches and instructors band together and hold these guys accountable for what they do. We can bring an end to it. 
No, I can't. I tell this all the time to, to parents and students. I can't fix the world. I can't. But maybe I can, I can improve or fix my little corner of it. Uh, and here's my forum. I can speak. Uh, I've got so much stuff to share. Uh, I could I could write ten books. And I am an author, so you never know when I'm going to write a book about baseball. I've been asked several times, when are you going to write one? And um, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I got other books out there that are selling. So anyway, so thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Um, please reach out if you don't know me, if you don't know the organization, it's National School of Baseball and Softball. Um, go to the website. You can find me on all social media, Coach Pete. Uh, learn about our Venom teams. Learn about what we do, uh, where I'm from. Um, it's my passion. It's what I love. Uh, teaching in this game is everything to me. It's it's my gig, man. Uh, it's, called, it's funny some people call me the baseball guy, which is which is fun. So anyway, listen. Be aware of what's going on around you. Protect the kids. This is about the kids, no matter what the age. It is about them. Um, and one thing I do take a lot of pride in. In teaching my students, whether it's in lessons or in Venom, is how to be sportsmen, how to take the higher road, and how to be better people. That is part of our job as instructors and coaches is teachers. We are teachers. We need better people. Um, and we need to set the example. And I'm not perfect. <laughs> Far from it. But I do take that seriously. And... Um, I'm proud to say that I'm, almost all my students that I know are, are good kids and they're good sportsmen, good parenting, and so on and so forth. So anyway, be aware. Uh, thanks for listening. I will catch you in the cages or on the field or you never know. Talk to you soon.